Yo, so this is going to be a quick tutorial. Of the setup. Some of you brought the kit, um, or you might want to be doing, you know, this type of work yourself. So let me start off with what can clean the kit. Now I, I don't no longer sell the kit anymore. Um, so at this point, if you want something like this, you're going to have to pretty much either commission me to make it for you. Um, there's been too many, eh, not too many. I've sold roughly about a hundred of these kits and I would say about 10 people had complained about, Hey, you know, there's no tutorial or they didn't know what to do. Um, you know, I've brought kits like this in the past for other things and there was rarely any real instructions. It kind of figured out like, you know, people who buy this are people who mod things as it is. So they already have a general idea, but I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how and what to do to prep your Batmobile. Now in the kit, you get one of these here. Um, this is a five volt um, power supply, power pack. As you see, it comes with two um, 20, 32 button cell batteries. It has an on and off switch on the top. Um, of course, red is positive, black is negative. Right, for the for the polarities, you also get in the kit um, several different um, LEDs. So you'll get two of these with the red LEDs attached to it. You'll get two yellows. All right now, the yellow is not these two yellow um, LEDs come separate. So what I do is when I mod these, I take tape, electric tape or at this point I put painter's tape because I ran out of electric tape and I just pretty much space them to get out like about that and I put them in here. Now after I do this I tie the yellow together, the two yellows together and the two blacks together. And this is the general prep so when you get the kit the first thing you want to do with the two yellow wires is do this. Okay? Um, same thing with the smaller one Okay, so I add two of them like that. And then you're gonna have a whole bunch of random colored LEDs. These are for the dash, okay? Now, what happens is I use a hot glue gun. Let me put this aside. You gotta have a hot glue gun. You can't do this without a hot glue gun. Well, technically you can, with, it just makes it easier if you use tape. Tape will fall apart eventually. So what I did was I drill holes and these little areas, I've just marked out wherever I want to drill a hole, to drill a hole there, boom, boom, boom. Then from there, what I do is I take either, um, either uh, some wax paper or you can use painter's tape, tape on this side of the hole, then use the hot glue gun and just, just make sure it's super hot on the highest setting and just drop a little bit of the, the glue gun, the glue in those holes. When you do that, wait for it to dry are completely hardy. Remove the the tape and you'll end up having a nice little window for all of these. After that, you're gonna take the LEDs, the random color LEDs, and whatever color you select for whatever hole that you drilled, you're gonna put the LED into that slot. All right? Then you're gonna take the glue gun and you're gonna put a little dab on the LED itself and put it in there and it should dry, it should stick like instantly. Uh, you might have to hold it for a couple seconds before it stops once it's there, you're good. Do that for all the holes for the, for the leftover LEDs you have, and that's it. From here you can take some black electric tape or if you have heat shrink, do that and put all the light color together and all the dark colors together. So now you have your positive and you have your negative leads, all right? And this is how you do this portion of the, um, the dash. Now, when you take out the dash, all right, you're gonna have this. So you're gonna have this be right in here, like so. It's gonna be held by three screws. One, two, three. You take this out. What's gonna, what's gonna have is that this dash is gonna be already in there. You can take this part out to mount it this way. This whole top part comes off. Okay, this is a whole other part. Um, 
you can leave it in there. You don't have to necessarily take this part out. You know, it's just one of those things. Now, if you are one of those people who brought one of those um, other kits from other people, I've also did this for a lot of customers where you see a double seater. This is good for the four inch figures. Um, a, a duty print of this. See this whole dashboard? I've done it many different ways, but pretty much that dashboard are these little panels here. They're actually separate pieces. They can come right off, okay? In order to do with this mod, you're gonna have to just t uh, pretty much snap off this back seat as you saw it. When I pull this out, just snap it off, or you can cut it off. It, it's held by like a thread down there. Um, and then pretty much on the back, see these little holes? Just drill into these holes here, lightly drill into the holes, and this whole entire thing will pop right out. All right, and all I did was just cut it down a little bit, and I just glued it to the center piece. And then you have the seats, the 3D printed, pretty nice. I still have this little back piece, which I can color or not color, you know, but either way, this. Now the dashboard here. So let me go into, let me go back to here for general prep. These, you're gonna have to cut these out. The way I do it, I, I do a couple, I drill a couple of holes, and then I take the X-Acto knife with a hair dryer and, and heat it up. If you can see a heat gun, that's cool, but be a couple quick passes. You don't want to put too much heat because you'll melt the plastic. A hair dryer is a good temperature where you don't you don't have to worry about affecting the plastic. It softens it up. Take a, an exacto knife or, or or some type of razor and just cut out this portion to be as it is. Right. This is the first prep part. The second is drill out these these individual um, tail lights. When you do that it's going to you're going to insert these here now some people got the kit where I left the LED the, the stock LED inside and some people just got um, a random LED and a hollow version of this now I did that two two purposes two ways now the resistor that's in the, these default when you set everything up it's going to be it's going to be lit up but it may not be super bright now if you just put it together, it's gonna to look good. Um, but if you use some other type of resistor or LED, you're gonna see it being much brighter. Um, for the purposes of this particular model, it, to me, it doesn't really matter, but some people want it super, super bright. That's cool. So you're gonna drill out these individual holes carefully. Once you do that, you're going to insert these. First, you're gonna take off the, the nut here. It's a little nut. Take that nut off, slide this in, screw the nut in to have these in place, okay? That's very important. Once you do for the both top and bottom, you're going to pretty much put all the blacks together, all the reds together. I gave you an, enough wire. Some of them will be two different colors. Some will be red and black. Some will be uh, green and yellow. The darker color will represent the, the negative and the lighter color will represent the positive, okay? So what it is is that I tie these together like this. At this point, I just really twist the tie together, okay? Now, I'm, I, I know there's soldering and you can do all the other stuff, but this is for the layman. This is for the person who's not trying to invest into a whole bunch of extra stuff. Um, you can get string tubes. You can get other stuff. Use electric tape or you can use painter's tape or some type of insulator to make sure that these don't come together, they don't touch, and you know you don't want to have the negative and the positive touch because it's going to short out all the um, LEDs and nothing's going to work. So take these off after you twist them together. Same thing for the lights down here. So I put two tapes together. You can use um, painter's tape. You can use electric tape. Um, you can use any type of tape. All right, and then I used a little bit of hot glue and I spotted it right here. Now I made it so point where it's right next to this uh, pole where you can screw in to tighten it up. And I connected all the like wires together and this is how I mounted this particular portion. Now, when I did that, I trailed it over. You can actually put it to the side. 
you're gonna have some le leftover wire. Mostly you're gonna have like I'll give you more wire than you need. So for this particular scenario, um, given the fact that this person uh, wanted a two seater for their for their Batmobile to put the four inch figure, I normally would put the the power supply. I would normally put it inside here, on the side. But because of the chair, it's gonna get in the way and I won't be able to install it without it being a hassle to change the batteries or whatever. So normally, for something like this, I would normally mount it right here on the side, like so. And, well, really that way. And then the wires would go out through here. Okay, or you can have the wires are long enough. You can have it come out where the foot part is. As an optional measure, if you're not going to put Batman, you can put other people in here. You can heat this portion up and use a knife to widen out this hole here. And to do that, you know, again, use a, a hair dryer. You can use a heat gun, but you got to be very, very careful. The heat gun will melt this. You want to cut this out, and then that will allow more the legs to go in smoother, and therefore Batman or whoever you decide to fit into the vehicle, it will smoothly go inside. And this is the reason why you have trouble with your Batman fitting in here, because you're supposed to get the legs and feet just right to go in these holes to put them in here. All right, but if you want to not have to fiddle with your figure to put them in here, you can use a again a hair dryer. I keep saying hair dryer, fellas, um, and ladies and gentlemen, because it, it, it's it's a temperament controlled heat source versus a heat gun, and most of you probably won't have a heat gun. You know, there's no purpose of most people having a heat gun unless you're doing painting or other or, or projects where you need it. But it's typically most people have in the household a hair dryer. If you're living with another female, or if you're a dude with long hair, you're gonna have a hair dryer. If not, you can pick one up. Uh, at, at a cheap old aftermarket store or whatever for like 10 bucks hair dryers are cheap as hell heat it up cut it up okay so that's what I'm to show you that. now for the overall base of this now I don't know if you can tell for this one I used scotch bright um, the, the the cleaning sponge for the dishes and I pretty much one direction scuffed it all the way through I kept going in the same direction. And after that, I smoothed it out um, with a, a finisher, a, a clear coat matte finisher. Now look at this. All right, looks pretty good. This is not painted. Now let's look at this one. This one is painted. Let's look them side by side. All right, you can hardly notice too much of a difference, All right? So the thing about it is that if you don't want to paint your your Batmobile, you're gonna you can use either like a, a 220 or 300 plus grit sandpaper and lightly going over it, um, and then you can go over it again with like a, a, a thousand or 800 grit sandpaper and just to smooth it out, um, or you can go over with paint. Now the paint that I use, I use like a plastic dip. Spray paint, I do that because it fills in any gaps, any holes, any imperfections, and also makes it smooth. Now, what I do with the plastic dip, I do it with the, the canopy, all right? So for the canopy, this mean grill, right, low profile grill. So what I use is a two part proxy called a prop Aves, a proxy scope, okay? This one, I, I have it in black, they come in different colors. Most of the time you'll find it in white only. It's a two-part proxy clay. So you got the activator and then you have the clay. This one's white. The black one is over there. But this part comes in different colors. Um, so what I did was take painter's tape, put it over the whole entire clear aspect, clear uh, portion of this. I took a, a Sharpie and I pretty much, you know, pretty much outlined where I want the grill to be. All right, so this grill actually comes up high. I use uh, a wet uh, cloth, and I pretty much put apply the the Aves 
two part approximately, you gotta mix this up really well. And then smooth it out. Smooth as, as humanly possible with just um, either a wet rag or, or something to smooth it out. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but smooth it out as, as best you can. The more you smooth it out in this portion, the easier it is. After everything is dry, do go over it with, with some sandpaper and smooth it out even more. Once you got it to the point of what you where you like it, spray paint it. I use plastic dip um, spray paint because um, it, it just fills in all the imperfections and gaps. Then you just cut out the rest of the um, painter's tape and then you have your low profile grill. Now there are other people that actually cut the, the canopy, use styrene um, sheets, which is just sheets of plastic. You just get them at the, um, at the hardware store and then you mold it in there. It takes too much time, too much effort. Most people are gonna mess it up if you're not used to doing it in that method. Um, so this to me is the easiest way and still getting that low profile. So let me show you what it was, what it is. So when you put it on, now you got that aggressive look, okay? So it, it works. Now you have the standard one, okay? So this one is how it comes to fault with the steering wheel dead center. Remember in this one, I, I pretty much moved, took out the wheel and I drilled a hole and put the wheel from the center over here with the, with the custom two seater, just so you can have this effect. But for this one, it's the same thing. I drilled out where I wanted the holes to be. Um, I put painter's tape over it. I put the heat setting on high, dropped it in to fill in the holes, waited for the dry, pull off the tape, and it has a nice perfect little windows. I used the same LED to put a drop of LED of uh, of hot glue. Right? I used in particular this one because it has different settings. Just put on a little bit of a tip, put it right where the hole is, wait a couple seconds, so maybe 30 seconds max wait for it to stick so you can let go and it won't fall put the same LEDs remaining LEDs in these areas tape off the one spot put all the light colors light colors on one one end all the dark colors on the other end then you have your positive negative again insert it back into your your cockpit have the, the lead wires hanging out bingo bingo you're done all right, so that is the part. Now, also, let me go back to this. If you're gonna spray paint this or whatever, I use painter tape to cover this off. Some people actually remove this part. This part, as you can see, is removable. I don't wanna do it right now, but you can, there's little holes, just like in, in here. You can cut up these little areas. This whole part will come right out. Uh, but this whole thing and this whole thing are three separate pieces. One, two, three, these are all three separate pieces. But all I do is tape off this part, leave everything else exposed. So when I spray paint or scuff it up, you'll, all of this is pretty much where it's at, you know. I also tape off this part. You can remove this, it's in this little peg, but then gluing it back together and everything else was a headache. So I ended up just taping this off, okay. Um, these grills here, you can remove them if you want. They have this kind of this grayish uh, tint to it, some, or I'll leave it black. You want to paint it you can keep these on um or you can remove them they're held by two screws they come right out that's up to you if you want them to gray stay gray or you want them to be black you keep them on and off based on what you want to do okay so these are just kind of the basics preps that you have to do with with these okay um this is not a tutorial on like how to I, I say drill a couple holes, um, hair dryer, cut the windows out. With these, you're gonna need an actual drill, drill it in here. If you have a step bit, if you have a drill, you're gonna have a, have a drill for this, important. Um, pardon me, guys. So, if you have a step bit, this is called a step bit. All right, because it has different um, steps, all right? 
for the different width of what hole you're drilling. Um, if you have something like this, this is perfect because it gives you the, the guide of what you need to drill all of this stuff here. Okay, these are expensive. They could be about $30. You might get them online for like $20, $15, $17. Uh, given a fact you're going with the plastic, you're good. So you can get the cheap old metal ones because it's never going to dull out with the, the plastic. If you go into metal, into brick and stuff like this, yeah, you might, well, might want to invest into some, something more heavy duty, more name brand. But for the purposes of modding plastic, this is more than enough. But this right here will give you the opportunity to drill out and make these holes to put in here. So let's go into the wiring aspect. Oh wait, no. First of all, let me backpedal a little bit. These. So if you got these right here, again, you can install these. They might not be as bright if I gave you just these. But most of the time, what I did was I pulled off this portion here that holds the uh, the uh, stock LED in here, which I don't even use. So pliers pulled out, you have the stock LED. Now, if you want to go one step further, you can remove the resistor and put a, a new resistor in. Um, but I just hollow that out. It just comes right out. Most of the time I can do it with my hand. And all I do is take the red LED, pop it in. Put a little a dab of hot glue right here in, 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 in the hole so it doesn't come out. And there you go. Instant. Now, somebody had complained saying, oh, well, these are rated for 12 volt. Why am I giving guys 5 volt batteries? Now, the only difference between about the 5 volts to the 9 volts and 12 volts is that the voltage will determine how bright these are. They can they can be powered up to 12 volts, but not over. 12, over 12 volts, you're going to burn them out. If you go to 5 volts, they'll be bright, but not as not as bright, of course, as the 12. Uh, 12 volt batteries and this smaller thing is not going to be ideal at all. Like, just not at all. So let me just show you uh, what I mean by that. I'll put these together. So this is five volts, all right? Still pretty good, all right? Um, and for the videos and for the finished product, let me get a finished product. So for the finished product, Right. I got my Michael Keaton Batman in here with the soft goods cape. You didn't get these soft goods cape anywhere. eBay, um, Amazon, you know, you're spending like about another 20 bucks on the cape. I'm not doing a video on a cape. So here I have, as you see, it's mounted here on the side, but I put the button to power it on up here. In this one but you can still change the batteries there this is the single seater you can still see um the lights on the dash single wheel nothing crazy again this is also something that i've had on and look how bright that is look how bright this is um i get on a moment about how you do this but you see this this is powered by five volts guys look at the look at the front Powered by five volts. So yeah, someone complained, oh, you're giving me 12 volt um, LEDs, you know, with a five volt and complaining. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 LEDs powered by five volts. I haven't changed the battery since I did this. this is one of the first ones that I did. Actually, this is, yeah, this is the second, this is the second one that I did. All right. I haven't changed the battery yet, guys. And I, I've left this on for quite some time. And look, so if this is not bright enough for you, I mean, you can always switch out with a 9-volt battery. It, it will be a little bit more brighter, but I think this is great for 5 volts. Okay? Great for 5 volts. So, now the other stuff, right? Painting this. I mean, that's going to be on you. Painting inside the wheel, painting the bat symbols, that's going to be on you. Painting the body, 
that's going to be on you. That's not coming with the kit. Um, but you're going to have to do some type of base. Now, some people want a shiny. If you still want it to look like this, like the, the stock, how it came with it, with a, kind of that gloss, use a semi-gloss when you paint in a canopy versus using a matte or a high gloss. And a semi-gloss will fit the stock body. If you just don't, if you just want to paint this and keep the stock body, use a semi-gloss spray paint. Okay. Um, so let's put this aside. Now let's go back to here. Okay. So same thing with the the smaller one here. Um, you can remove. Remove this little portion here, and for the for the last I would say last 15 orders, I removed this for you, so you would have only had a hollow for the for the first a group of orders. You had this LED inside, no problem. Take off the nut, I'll leave the nut in. This will fit perfectly inside that little area, okay? And you have an instant LED for your for your bottom tail light. It's simple. Now the wiring. So for the prep, let's go back to the prep, okay? So I take the two yellow wires, I put tape onto it, and, and this is pretty much where I start. This is my prep work, the yellow wires. Now, as you see, there's like a little bit of a snake scenario where it's angled, angled. So there's this hard wire within the black portions of, this, of the LEDs. You see this portion? Because the resistor and the leads here, you have this. Now, once you do this, you, you can't undo it because you don't want to bend it too much. So you can bend it, and you see it keeps that, that angle, and then carefully bend slightly here. And now you have this S mark, right? Or, or like a Z. So you got multiple angles. And then for which, what you do is, when you come here, I would say go as close to where this first mark is, and glue it right there, or tape it. I would say glue because it's going to hold longer. Tape will eventually come off with the weight and the and the dangling around. You're going to actually let it drop. So that's that's the first part. Now the windows. Now I've had people say, "Hey, you said you gave me gels, and I didn't get no gel. Gel is actual gel. I'm, it's not an actual gel. In and staging and everything else, they come with sheets, right? Come with these sheets. Look, a whole bunch of them." Okay, these sheets are called gels for stage lights. You cut them out, you, you put them into the, the, the lighting, and this is what will project on stage of that color. The gels, they, they, they're pretty good with heat resistant. So you're gonna get this little strip. You're gonna either get this strip or you're gonna get a few of these cut strips, depending on how I shipped it, okay? and these go here so these have to be cut to fit to go into here so the first thing you're going to do is remove this plastic there's a good plastic on both sides remove the plastic from both sides now choose a side and use sandpaper um a, a light grit sandpaper or heavy grit however you want to do it and you want to you just pretty much carefully want to hold it down and sand in one direction only. Do not go back and forth because if you bend this, it's gonna have a line to it, it's gonna mess it up, and you're gonna feel some type of way. Just take it on a, on, on a floor, on a floor, on a table, and you're gonna sand it in one direction, okay? Now, there's enough of this where you can actually have, you can double up. Now, on here, you'll have, I have one, so I have it between this pole and this edge here, I put glue on this part here, glue on this part here, and I pushed it in. And as you see, it's it's perfectly aligned. Now, some people wanted the to hey, can you get the the gel to be on the surface? Now you could, but if you're looking at the movie accuracy, the the, the headlights are actually pushed in. So if, if there's a whole thing you're going for movie accuracy, it's better to do this way. If you want it to actually fit perfectly in this area. You could, you're going to have to cut it out perfectly and then I would say use like a clear um, clear desktop tape to put it on, on top and then glue the clear desktop tape to hold it in place. That would be your best bet. Alright? But what it is, you cut this to, to fit 
you put it inside here on both sides and then you can take another the, the remaining portion of it, but you're gonna have extra and put another layer so you put another layer like so inside but that second layer should be you know put sandpaper on that too send that down on both sides for the second layer now once you have all of this wired up so you're gonna have uh, the wires coming from the dash all the blacks together all the lights together tie them together there should be enough lead where you can tie you can twisty tie them together here put electric tape painters tape or some type of insulator over this or you can even use the hot glue gun and hot glue when they're together there's enough wire again to go all the way to the back do the same thing here tie all the all these blacks together all the reds together put it to the lighter wire i say the lighter wire because if i ran out of red and black i gave you two different colors so whatever you chose for your dark color for your for your black color come to there come to here just to tie it and then you have this now for this particular one i'm actually putting the power supply on the bottom okay i use this as a placeholder so i have the power supply on here on the bottom so because of that i have an additional wiring here where i'm going to connect to here and then place it on okay and i'm actually going to do that right now on camera i'm going to move this out the way so you guys are cool with this part right you take up all the screws so this comes like this. This is all one piece. Take up all the screws. Lift this up. This is all one piece. All right? The other side. Then you're going to have um, the back turbine. You're going to be left with this piece here. Right? Which is going to be in here. And all you're going to do is lift it up. It's going to be hard. So it's going to feel like you're going to break it. You're not going to break it. Just lift it from the top here, and it pops right off. Okay? Now, for the purposes of everything else, because we're not really got nothing to do with this, I'm going to pop this one back in. Because it has served its purpose. I took it out. Um, I took it out just because I didn't want to paint this, and I didn't want this to get scuffed up. But that's what it is. You push it back in. And I wanted to keep the same gunmetal because on the original OG one, this is actually gunmetal. This part right here could be a little black, but this portion here was a gunmetal. Um, so that's it. Now for this portion here, all right, this portion here slides right in. Boop. Right into that portion right there. All right, same thing to take it out. Now, let's go over how to get it to light up. All right, now this is where it becomes a little tricky. This is a, a method that I use. Now there's two things that I do. When I give you the kit, I give you the kit with a gel. And you can come in here, you can cut the fit, and you, you can put the gel onto this little middle piece here. And then you have a screen, you drill it in here, put this single LED, slide the LED inside, which, go you can, you can screw it there's like a little area right there you can screw into that area put the LED in there boom okay so you can use the method with this and put that in there and you can have your back now what I do mostly when I, when I mod I use crystal clear um, glue sticks okay I drill a hole inside here I put the so for instance I'm doing the camera. All right. And then I put the LED inside. All right? And just as a placeholder, take a little tape. Hold it into place. And now you got the LED there. I'm gonna pull it back a little bit more. So I like to have the LED as in the mid, not too high, not too low. And like that. 
And so what I do is I have the hot glue, which I didn't, I didn't have it on, unfortunately. Um, I'm not going to be able to do this on camera because it takes a, uh, a couple minutes to... Well, maybe I'll be able to do it by the end of the video. Maybe I'll do it on camera. But what it is is that I take the hot glue and I carefully, little by little, pour it in here at the hottest setting and I keep it up. And what's going to happen is it's going to fill in the whole entire thing until it gets to the top. Once it gets there, I let it harden. Once it hardens, it's going to give that same effect that you saw on the finished Batmobile. Now, the other thing you could do is you can carefully try to cut this out, place this inside, and you have that same, you have a similar effect. All right? Um, but the same thing on here, in order to get that diffused look, you're going to have to sand one side of this and put it inside. All right. Um, what else I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting? So yeah, this portion goes like so, and then you tie the, all of these wires together. So. Now, let me go back to the, the placement of this battery pack. Now, I did one where I, I showed you where I put it inside the cockpit. Um, and for this one, I put it on here. What I did was I cut out this little portion here and to make it flat, and I put it here. Normally, I would put it either by the wheel or I could put it or I cut into here a little bit. Or sometimes I put a flat on either the surface because this is so flat, low profile. That it won't interfere when you're rolling this. But I ended up putting it low out of the way. Um, snaking it to the other side. And then this is what I would use to connect. Alright. Now the, the other portion is like, you can, again, you can use a 9 volt battery. Protect it if, if, if that's what you require. Unless you want, if you want to be a little bit brighter. This is the 9 volt. So let me, let me show you the size difference. The reason why I started going with the, with the 5 volt because it was so easy to manipulate. Look at this. Look at the size difference. Okay? I can hide this almost anywhere. This one's a little harder. So the very first one I did, I used a 9 volt battery holder. This one has an off and on. Right? And then what I did was I either put it here. Right? I had glued it either there or facing this way actually. And drill a hole in there and then it comes off it comes off that way and that was one of the ways I did it first way I did it it doesn't look clean but it worked and you have more power so the LED lights were a little bit brighter and I'm telling you it really is not a, a night and day difference it's, it's not it's a little bit brighter it's not a, not a significant brightness the 5 volts are more than enough to carry that alright um So let's let's just hook this up real quick. Okay, I'm gonna twist the twist this together here. I'm gonna twist this together here. Remember, this is five volts again. Okay. So you're gonna have the lights there. Oh, you're gonna have the lights there. Again, I, I didn't hook this one up yet because I'm waiting for that to go in. But even if I did, let's try to hook this one up here. And there you go there for the for the last one. All right, so you have all of this. This will be hooked up to that portion there. put it all together and then you'll have all together right I didn't hook that one up yet but th this is the basic wiring fellas ladies and gentlemen okay the lights. 
for the headlights. So normally I double them up. So that's actually a single. Um, let's go back. Where did I put that thing? Let me go back to wiring this up again. So I just want you to see the difference um, within the. You know what? Let's, let's do another spot. Another here. So I'm going to use um, a wire slur. You can get these online for like eBay or whatever for practically nothing. Okay. Um, so all it does is it strips the wire so you have more of a lead. Alright. You put it in. It's, it's pretty it's pretty cool um, versus the traditional one which you know the traditional one is not it's not that bad okay you want to tie this together now I, I can hear a lot of people say hey man how can you solder it how can you do this look I, I'm, I'm we're talking about the person who brought this kit and the ones that are confused or what to do this is this uh, like wiring basics you know you can solder this you can heat shrink it um and for those who are like what's heat shrink good question glad you asked um when you heat shrink something it pretty much comes in these things like this right it's these tubes you pretty much slide it onto the wire, like so, and you slide the other side in. Well, at this point, it would be all like this. I mean, try this one. Even though this particular one is super big, um, I don't want to permanently do this because I'm going to use this for something else. But you twist it together, have it in there, slide it over, and use a match or a lighter or, or some type of heat sauce, and it's going to shrink it together, tighten it to seal it, all right? You can do that without having to worry about soldering or anything else. This is also probably a good method. Something like this will cost you about uh, seven bucks or twenty bucks, depending on the brand. Um, you could do it that way if you like. Okay, and 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 that's for just to satisfy those who like, hey, well, LED. Look, end of the day, this is somebody who does. This is for somebody who's just getting into this. They're not trying to invest money into soldering guns and all this other stuff. You know, for them buying all this extra stuff for this one or two projects, nah. If you're going to do multiple projects, then it makes more sense. Okay, 5 volts. Powered in. So, as you see here, I just want to do this like this. Because I just want to show you something. I'm going to put it so real close. If you put it real close, see two dots the further you go away the the better it looks okay so what you want to do is that you want to angle angle the leds here to the point where it's not too too close but you don't want it too close but you don't want it to burn in you want it enough so it diffuses now the diffusion comes in the fact that i've actually used i sanded one aspect so this one is already pre-sanded so you can kind of see that whole scenario too close far away so you gotta judge the distance to get the perfect um amount of diffusion and light dispersal if you don't do that you're gonna end up with something else let me see if i have i know i have more So I got more. So if you do it like this, it doesn't matter how far or low or far away from it, you're gonna always see the LEDs in, in, in the back, right? So this is why one of the steps to do this is to sand it. So sand one side, keep the, the slick side facing outwards, and then you'll have that same diffusion. Now, if you really wanna be you know some type of way about it you could double it up and there you go you still then you can have a better 
thing. So that's what I'm going to do with with this one. I'm going to double it up and space it. So right now, for quick purposes, I, I put this together just to, to, to throw it in there. I actually got to move these LEDs closer in, in a Batmobile. But what you want to do is double diffuse it. So I will put one in here, as I did. And then I'll put another one right in here. So I would take this, take some scissors, and then drop it right in there. So I would drop it right in there like so, and that would give me a good diffusion. up so you can see it on camera uh, this part is not the hardest part of this whole thing and I know everybody had questions about lighting and, 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 and where the LEDs go and everything else so this is the basic wiring for this okay and you see there see that it's more diffused now look at this one that one look at this one okay so it's all about you know putting it in that right spot in order to get it so you're gonna have to mess with that in order for you to get that perfect thing now for the fact that the camera is in the way I normally do this with close up to me um, closer to this I don't have the perfect camera set up to really do it on on camera um, but pretty much if you have with the extra piece Let's put an extra piece. And this is only one sand on one side. I normally would sand both sides for the second piece. The, the more you sand, the more you scuff this up, this, the second piece, the better the diffusion of the light. And, and, and when it's diffused, you don't get this. So you can see this no matter how far away. You can still see everything in the background. But when it's sanded, you will only see whatever is close to it. All right. So that's just one of the tricks of the trades of how to get this part done. But now my heat gun is at the is at the hottest temperature. I have my my LED in there. I'm just gonna move it up a little bit more because I want it to be a little bit closer to the surface. That's it. Now I have a hole there. So before I start pouring this in and burning the hell out of myself, I'm going to use some painter tape. Now, I use painter tape because the hot glue is not going to stick to this. It's not. And and it, it works wonders. So I'm going to cover the hole so I don't burn the hell out of myself. And I'm going to pour the hot glue inside all right so can you kind of see that I don't want to pour it I don't want to tip it too much but so the whole entire hot glue is inside that one hole but if, if I pour it to one side to another side it's going to ooze out so what I will do is let this dry by itself and get this out of the way. Um, and the same thing if I put it together. Yeah, I can't. I have to let it dry um, so you can see it from there. But this was, it's gonna take a couple minutes for it to dry. This is a lot of hot glue. So it's have to go through temperatures and temperatures of water. What I would do normally in this case, I would take um, some cold water and dip this into cold water. These wires are inflated. So you don't have to worry about shorting these wires out. I mean, do not power them while you while you dip it into water. Uh, but you can dip this into water, cold water, or you can put it in the freezer or refrigerator to let it cool quicker. If not, it's going to take a couple minutes because I have a lot of hot glue in here. 
once it actually hardens, it's going to harden and it's going to have this look here. It's going to have this same type of cloudy look. And, and that is the ultimate diffusion. So it's going to reflect all the light and make it nice and bright. Now, I normally add a, an extra LED in here. If you want to put two LEDs for one LED, you could do that as well. Um, the more LEDs you put in here, the brighter it's going to be. Um, so instead of putting the extra red LED for the dash, you can put the extra one for this portion if you like. Okay. Um, but for the most part, this is what this is what this is. This is what goes into uh, making these these Batmobiles, man. This is this is what it goes into and somebody wanted me to make this video for a long time and I apologize for taking this long to do so. Um, so now the reassembly is is simple. But let me show you something that you have to be uh, pay attention to. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna remove this the cockpit. Okay. So once you have this in, right? Once you have the the cockpit back in, you have the, everything is inside. The wires are to the side. You can take this or the hot glue it to the side to get out the way. Or you can actually drill a hole on this side and snip the wires through. However, you would like to do it. I think this is fine, especially for for this one. Um, for me, I'm gonna take the hot glue and I'm going to put a little dab of glue there to hold this wire out of the way, so that when you put the figure in, it's not kicking the wire. But. To reassemble oh wait you know what I, I skipped a whole other part I'm sorry so you have the guns right the guns that that come with it this is the, one of the whole reasons why you're getting the kit to, to complete the look right so you want to make sure that these guns are good magnets so when they come together and you come with this it's gonna have the magnets inside and in so once you get all this taken apart right you want to place your magnet and you place your guns right where they want the magnet to be so make sure the magnet is actually gonna to stick to the right side because you flip it around it's not gonna work and then it's gonna be cause all type of trouble so on this side Select where you want the gun to be. I, I had at one point in the circle, I thought that was a good idea, but I felt that it looked much better if you bring it back. Or you can put it in the middle. Wherever you decide you want to put the metal, the magnet, but put it somewhere along this portion here to make it a little bit more accurate, all right? So I'm gonna put it right where these grates are. Then I'm gonna take the magnet, I'm gonna drop it in there, okay? So now that I, that's where I want it, then I'm going to now take the hot glue and I'm going to pretty much pour it right on top. Okay. And that is that there. All right, I'm gonna remove this. Take the next one. Put the the gun where I want it to be first. Drop it in. All right. That's where I want it to be. Then I'm gonna take the hot glue and drop it in.
So now I have the guns where I want it to be. One thing about the hot glue gun, you always gonna have these little strings all over the place. So annoying. But that's that's the basis of it. Now you have, you you installed your your guns. From there, you can paint these however you want. You can leave them black. You can leave them silver. However, I printed them. I, I and however I, I ship them to you. Some of you got all silver guns. Some of you got all black guns. Um, and some of them are weathered, um, pretty weathered for you. But either way. This is how you install the guns. So those who didn't buy the kit, the lighting kit, or, you, or you're not trying to do the LED kits, LED portion of this uh, project, this is pretty much what you do. You pretty much take the, um, the guns, place it where you want to put it, put the magnet on the opposite side, tape it or glue it, or tape it and glue it, and then make sure it's mounted. That's it. That's the easiest thing to do. Um, you're gonna have to probably take off the. No, you may not have to take the cockpit off. No, you might have to. You have to take. The, you're gonna have to take this whole portion off um, if you're mounting the gun anyway, because you need to get into that pocket. Unless you want to do it here on the circle aspect, which is right here, then you don't need to. But if you're just buying the kit, you just want the guns. You want. You like the. You don't want the LED portion to it. This is the easy, quick um, way of installing the guns. Magnet on one side, magnet on the other side. Make sure it's sticking to right where you want it to be. All right, and glue it in. That's it. All right. So all together, this is pretty much what or how you do this. Um, now, so now you got the basic wiring, you got the, the theory, make sure you pretty much space this correctly, keep, put, keep the power on, make sure it's corrected, um, you know, portion, or, sorry, make sure it is distanced correctly so you can get the right diffusion, the right light of light to your desire. Okay, once you did all of that, this is the easy part. Pretty much, I'm going to let you know that the wiring and the getting the, the guns on it is the easiest portion of it. The drilling, you gotta have a drill. Again, I recommend a step, a step bit. Um, I recommend a, a, heat, uh, a glue gun, you need that. Um, if you want the canopy, once again, you're gonna use Abe's um, two-part proxy. You get the black color one so it matches better. If you get the white or the gray, you're gonna have to do a lot more painting and priming. Um, you get the black. So now it's about reassembling it. Now, I should have done a disassemble video, part of it, but there's tons of them out there. So you want to put this portion in and snap it in. That's step one. Okay? Step one is that. Um, the next portion of it that you want to do is... Put back... The turbine okay you see the turbine has these little tabs these are for the bottom okay you put it inside take off these parts and you painted them cool but if you did like I did you want to screw those back in okay so you want to screw them back in now you, it's, it's, it's not impossible but it's hard to screw wrong so you got this little main tab for the center you got this offset tab now on this it has an offset tab there so you might pretty much put it in and you just screw it in. right this is, this is nothing this is the 
the most screwing I'm going to do in this in this video. Um, and this is me just giving you the, the rough the rough patch of it. Now, if I did this whole thing like how some other people did, it would take me. You can see what the, the video will be hours. Um, I do not want you to be sitting through this through hours. Um, I feel like what I'm showing you is should be enough to get the basics of how to put this together. The wiring, which was the most part that people were cons you know concerned about. The prep again, put the two yellows together, tape them together. The, the 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 black portion of the LEDs can bend, and you space it correctly, glue it in, in, into place. Use the addition for the for the dash, right? Um, this one glue for the dash. Drill out the individual holes. Do not use a step bit for that one, because that would that would make a hole way too big. Use a smaller drill. Drill out the holes here. Put some blue tape or some wax paper on that. Hold the other side without the glove. Don't want to burn yourself. A couple of dabs to, to fill in the um, holes. Put the LEDs where you want for the holes. Put another dab on those. Put those in there. Put all the black wires together, the light wires together. Right? Drop that inside to here. Now you have that portion. Simple, simple. Now here's the part. You have this little tab that releases. It has a little sign, little slab here, a little thing there. You want to make sure that's aligned within here. So I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's like a little indention here to fit this little indention right there. So you can't put this in the wrong way. That's the beauty of it. Then you have this portion here, the spring portion. Okay? You want the spring to be facing up. And you want it to be just like that. There's a little little area here for the little tabs. I'm going to put it right in there. It doesn't snap on, it just lays in there. Okay. You install your, your canopy. Now to get this perfectly aligned, there's a little box here. You want to slide this into the little box. Like so. In that portion, actually I, I lied, I'm going to have to screw in a couple more things. So we get three more screws. This one's still not dry. So for the purpose of the video, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend that this has that in it. We're gonna put this portion here. So we're gonna put the D side down this way. The wires are gonna be connected either if you put the power supply connected to this, or you can put the power supply on the bottom that was on your personal preference okay and then you just want to put it on top and there you go and that's pretty much it and you just put the screws in and everything in this part still pops up and then you still got your whole entire canopy and like this one is a double seater with the offset wheel to be in front of the driver's seat you know, and then of course with the, the guns. You know, you can position the guns any way you want. And there you go, buddy. There it is. I got all of this little blue string that's annoying the hell out of me. I mean, I'm going to clean this up before I ship it out to the client anyway. But for the most part, this is this is what it will look like, you know. Um, I still gotta clean it up inside, 
you know, I still have to put the distance, the right distance for the LEDs, but in the end of the day, your finished product will be this. Okay. Once everything is all said and done, like I said, that one is, is, is there. You got the, the lights, the fuse, I got them centered. I got them in place in, in a perfect way where it gets the best diffusion. Um, you got your tail lights. Again, this is five volts. So if you think this is pretty bright, then you're good. Um, nine volts, you can also upgrade to the nine volt, get a little bit brighter um, if you like. Same thing with this portion. This is a single LED in the center. And you see how it's diffused with the, the hot glue. Um, the lights are not overpowering inside, right? Here, so the lights are not overpowering inside. They're they're, they're probably they're bright enough to give the effect, but not too bright to overpower. Now I say that because I had some people say, "Hey, the lights in the cockpit's too bright." The whole thing, and you've seen some of the other videos and pictures of, of I did. Where this whole entire thing inside you saw it light up. So what I did was I um, didn't put the LEDs all the way in closer to the to the holes. I actually that's why I told you put a little dab of um, hot glue first and then put it on there. So it gives some distance between where the hole is and the hot glue. So it doesn't it's not overpowering and super bright. So these are now perfectly accent lighted. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but you can kind of see lights from certain angles. All right, you might be able to see it from certain angles. But for the most part, you know, this is your end result. Okay? Scuff it with a scotch block, scotch bright or or like a high grit, you know, 220 or, or better uh, sandpaper. You can use plastic dip spray paint to fill in all the scratches and imperfections. Um, use semi-gloss if you want it to keep the stock color or you can use flat black um, if you want this use a quick base not an oil base um, for all this portion here to paint there's tons of metallic paints you can buy use acrylic not not enamel because um, enamel it, it, it hardens and can crack and rust uh, acrylic doesn't do that um, same thing here. You can paint those, paint all of this. You can leave this stock, this gunmetal, or you can paint it black. However, you would like it to do. These guns are definitely different from what I do. These guns are from. These are, are kit bash from several different um, actual guns I had laying around from the McFarlane. Cut the barrels off and change them up. They're not movie accurate at all. I like them. That's why I'm keeping them for myself. But. Some people like more of these screen accurate ones, which that's why I sell, try to sell the ones that I'm selling. But for the most part, this is what it is. And if you were one of the lucky few who got the, the two pack, it already comes with the wheels painted silver inside here. And it already comes with the matte black finish. That's the only thing. It's still gonna have the, the, the wonky uh, big um, screen um, canopy, but I, it's still like they match the canopy better with the newer one. If you want you to get that one, and then you got some reuse and some new parts for the Michael Keaton Batman um, arms and abs, I believe, are different, more movie accurate from the 1989. But for the most part, oh, this is what this is what your end result should come out looking like. Excuse me. This one kind of a little stuck. I actually put away too much paint when I spray paint it, so mine doesn't pop up like it like it, it should on stock. But it still opens. So yo, know, this is pretty much what the end result is. I'm sorry I didn't do a complete hundred percent foot by foot, toe by toe, inch by inch, um, you know, me putting it together. But I think people got this portion already in there, putting the magnets in and, and putting the guns in. And I think that is a, a thing that people like. You know, I like the fact that you can move this. I mean, I know 
it's supposed to stay forward. But, you know, I don't know. I feel like you can pose it up in this way. There are plenty of gun effects, gun blast effects you can put on it, aftermarket stuff. Um, you can have them shooting in different directions. I don't know. Play with it how you want to play with it. You know what I'm saying? Pose it the way you want to pose it, action figure, photography, or display. Um, but having this inset like this is pretty much movie accurate. But again, if you want it to be, you can cut it cleanly, use some clear plastic tape, uh, crystal clear plastic tape to make it a little forward. And again, play with the LEDs to make sure that you're at the right angle. Um, all right, choose where you want the power supply, that's on you. Um, the wiring is pretty much straightforward. All the dark colors together, all the light colors together. Again, I give you more than enough because this is an unusual circumstance where I gotta put it onto this portion. Normally the power supply will be, probably this is more center. Power supply will be more onto this side and this side. So the wire will be more than enough to, to get everything in there. But yo, this is it, man. This is, this is what you would do. This is how you would do it to put everything together. Is this hard enough yet? Sticky. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's in there. Okay, now that it, it's dry, it's sinking a little bit. I might have to put some a little bit more glue inside. Um. Okay, all right, here we go. All right, here we go. Boom. That's how it looks. Okay. So that was with. The nine volt. Okay, so I'm going to show you. That was a 9-volt battery. Uh, here you go with the 5-volt. Okay. Like I said, it's an overall slight difference. Not much of a difference, in my opinion. Um, and not because I'm the one who's selling this and, and doing this and want you guys to feel some type of way. Nope, 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 nope. Turn it off. You're gonna have that that look there, right? On, off, on, off, on, off. So putting it all together. So same scenario. All the reds together. All the light colors, depending on your what wire you're dealing with. Now, I would recommend if you don't have a soldering scenario, you know, use heat shrink. But if you don't have any of that stuff and you're really not trying to invest and this is like a one and done for you, um, use some electric tape um, after you twist it together. Um, I know people are like, oh, this is crazy. You should never have people do. Look, remember, this is for the this is for the layman. This is for the person who doesn't do this on a normal basis. This is for that that person. Okay. Okay. So now we have those together. That together with my loose red. Okay, my loose red.
figure with this, sorry, with the silence, with this, uh, I'll do the, having everything wired together one last time. so you can get the final product inside. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. So right now, I got this in here, I got this in here. Um, I'm going to put the additional Side. And I'm out of glue sticks. All right, so now I'm just gonna put some some diffused parts inside. I, I figure, like, hey. If you sat through the video this long, you might also well see the end result official. So I'm just going to put the last finishing touches on this, which is uh, the other diffused uh, portion that I was talking about before. So here we go, another piece of gel that is all scratched up on both sides. Hot gluing this part into place. Okay. Now I'm gonna also tell you about another part. That this is optional. You don't have to do this portion. But if you have silver tape, right? You have silver tape. Cut a portion of this, all right, and put it right here at the bottom. Okay, right there at the bottom. And what this is going to do is whatever light is going to bounce off the, the bottom and come back at the top. Um, is it necessary? No, absolutely not. Um, is, it, is it something that I do here and there just to make sure you get the maximum brightness? Yeah. But again, not necessary. You know, I, I don't want people to go and spend a whole bunch of extra money on, on a whole bunch of stuff and be like, oh man, I gotta buy this, I gotta buy this. No, no, no. It's just something a little extra that I do. Like, it, like if you buy a kit from me, you're not going to get spray paint. I'm not giving you spray paint. I'm not giving you, uh, you know, the repaints and everything else. That's something that's you got to do yourself. Um, there's no way that I can provide that service long distance outside of you sending me your Batmobile or your Batwing or your Bat Cycle or whatever. I mean, since we're dealing with the Bat symbol, Bat stuff, I'm going to work with that. But... I can put LED lights into anything. Okay, I'm just gonna use a little tape here. And this is just to make sure that it doesn't touch. This is not necessarily for anything else. Um, I still gotta do other things to the vehicle. Okay, everything is in. Batteries, you gotta go no point of batteries. So, the batteries in one, two. And there you go. You got the headlights, you got the tail lights, you got the jet exhaust. You have the, I don't know if you can see it from the camera, but you also now have the lights on the dash. 
Again, this is the two-seater for the four-inch figures. This is the uh, standard McFarlane Flash movie Batmobile. Yeah, one thing about dealing with the damn hot glue, you get a lot of those stringing. This is annoying as all hell. But yo, this is it. So you get, I'm oh, sorry. Well, you know, you're supposed to be all screwed together, but you got the you got the tail lights, the headlights, you got the dash lights, you got the um the thruster, right? You got all that in there, and then to top it off for the final aspect of all of this, you got yourself the guns. All right. So overall, you have the full scope of everything to here so that's that's the wiring that's how you prep the individual lights this is how you prep i went over how to prep and install these um lights for the the tails um the tools you're going to need is, is pretty much a step bit which i think is, a, is an excellent idea you're going to need a screwdriver to go inside um you can upgrade yourself or you can ask me um, to upgrade to 9 volt versus the 5 volt. Um, you have the single uh, single wheel, well, uh, one seater for 7 inch figures, um, cop it, or you have the two seater for 4 inch figures, right? So you have those two as an option, right? You saw how I drill the hole and put the hot glue in there to do it. Now, that window method is something that I've done for the other Batmobiles and the other things that I've done. I put tape on the front, um, and I put the tape so it sinks in a little bit. I put the hot glue on the, on the hottest setting, let it melt, let all the, uh, the hot glue melt inside, let it dry. Once it dry, pull up the tape, and it gives you a window, same like this. And all you gotta do at that point is use a um, use crystal clear orange for the um, for the headlights. There's a little paint on it, and it gives the same effect. Matter of fact, if you look at my old other videos for the Batmobile, that's what I did. I didn't do the gel method. I actually did the hot glue method for the um, for the headlights, and and that's the same thing how I do for the dash, and how I did it with the the, the Nightwing. Nightwing, the the Batwing, as well. So these are all good methods on how to do it like this. All right. Um, same thing if you're looking at, let's say something like this. Right. So this here is the Flash movie Bat Cycle. Right. Took it apart, painted it all black, make the accent silvers in this. Um, same thing powered by the same um, 5 volts powered on you got the blue accent for inside so you can get kind of that blue look in a the movie there's a lot of blue uh, lights coming from underneath the bike so I put that in there as accent lights he actually had a blue light in the back um, in one of my videos I had a red light um, it made sense being a red but for the movie accurate I had blue okay and then for the headlights um, the same thing so I use the same gels scratch it up on, on this time I scratch it on both sides put it inside and mounted the LEDs on the other side the same way the prep as I did for the LEDs for the Batmobile I did the same thing with this the only added tea is that underneath here you can see that little button here I press that button and it gives me guns. And all I'm doing is, is breaking the circuit. So once you wire everything up, like how I would do this, and, and I would just deny either the positive or the negative and hook up the positive to a, the switch. And then from the other side of the switch, back to the, to the power supply to completing the circuit. And then when it completes the circuit, it gives you this and that. These LEDs are, they blink purposely. I brought them to the pre-programmed to blink. Um, you know, so if anyone was wondering how do I get the blink, you, you buy them this way. 
Now, if this was a bigger project and, and a bigger, more real estate, and I wanted to spend more money, I can use an Adreno board and, and program um, with a monetary button. Monetary button is different from a latching switch, which I'm not going to get into that. Um, and I can make it do all different types of things, but that's also a little pricey and a little extra. But for the purpose of this, keeping it real simple, real basic, you know, you can do whatever with it. So this right here is going out to another customer. Um, they wanted this specifically. They wanted the black. Give that little Batman aesthetic and feel, making this and clean. So you guys got to understand, man, this, this isn't as hard as it may look. You know, but I just want you to show you the different power types, basic wiring and prep on how to how to get the Batmobile up and running. Um, the only thing you didn't see me do was spray paint this, which again you've seen tons of videos of people spray painting it. You did not see me um, scoping out the um, the canopy. You did not see me um, drill out the windows for the for the. Um, for the headlights or drill out the holes to put the indicator lights in but you saw me do the the afterburner so it's the same damn thing um overall pick and choose where you want to do it install it the way you, like this paint it and you're good you're good to go so hopefully this was uh unfortunately a long video um but this is the tutorial on how to Pretty much put the Batman, the Batwing, and the Bat Cycle for Batman, the Batmobile, the Bat Cycle, and also the same method you would use to do with um, the Batwing. All right. So again, this is it. Hopefully, this helps um, all of you guys who brought the kits or are willing to just buy the LEDs yourself and get this in it. This is how I've done it. Again, the window method. I have I did this. You can do the same thing with with these, the headlights and tail lights. Um, and you're just gonna need one extra step by buying the crystal clear color version of what color you want. So it would be red for here. It would be yellow for the for the for the front. You know. So if you don't want to go through the whole color changing LED aspect, that would be the quickest way of doing it. But thanks again for watching, guys. I'm sorry for this uh, long video. Peace out.